we want to send a message that consists of four packets of data. So from B to E. Okay, we've got four packets. Now, <coughs> I'm just going to number them. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, the first packet, I'm at B. There's a decision made. And we don't need to worry really what how the decision's made because that's like complicated algorithms. But you could say that there's not much information travelling on this communication channel. So, we'll use that one. So, we send packet one that way. Okay. When we get to A, A decides which way to go again. It would be stupid if A went, ooh, I think I'll send it back to B. That would be stupid. All right, we'd be going ping-ponging around forever. So what A might say is, oh, okay, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to send it this way. Okay. It gets to C. C goes, ooh, I think I'll send it this way. Now, there is information in the packet of data that says, Right, B sent it, to not send it back there, but also we're trying to get to E. Now, each one of these communication centres or routers knows who it's connected to. Okay? And it has some idea in what direction it ought to send it to get it to the destination. When it gets to H, H is going to send it that way. When it gets to G, G goes, hey, I know E, I'm going to send it directly to them. I'm connected. Now, how many routing operations has the first packet gone through? So how many times has it travelled? <laughs> Five. Okay, so E receives packet one. Five movements. Okay. As soon as packet one's disappeared, packet two can be sent. Yeah? Let's say B does this. Two. Gets to C. C goes, Oi, I can. this one's clear. I'm going to send it straight on. So we receive packet two. How many movements did it have? Makes it sound like it's been to the toilet, but... How many movements does two add? Two. Right. Can anyone see a potential problem with this method of sending data? Get out of order. Pardon? Get out of order. Excellent. That is the big problem with packet switching. Get it out of order. All right, packet two will arrive before packet five. And when we send all this data, we can't know how long the packet is going to take. We don't know what route it's going to go. We don't need to know, and that's what makes packet switching work. We don't need to know. We don't care as long as it gets there okay, in a reasonable amount of time. Right, so packet three might go this way. So three has one, two, three, four movements. <coughs> and packet four, that might just go this way. So packet four, three movements. Now, they are going to arrive in the wrong order. So what mechanism that we've looked at before might we be able to use in order to reorder them? Begins with a B. Buffer. So we buffer the data. So when we get that first packet through, there will be some information in the packet that will say, I am packet two of four. So we know how many packets we are due to receive. So we can make a buffer and we can say, okay, Mr. Two, you go in there. When I get the first packet, because they're all identified as I am one of four and what have you, they can go in. When we've received all the packets, we've got the original data that we sent. <clears throat> when you are streaming video on YouTube, the data is coming to you like this. It is not coming through a dedicated channel. Okay? It's coming through this packet root system. Alright, so you can't know when the data is going to arrive. So sometimes, even when you've got a very fast connection, you might not receive all the data in the right order. The worst case scenario for streaming a, a video 
is that you don't get the first packet, which means you're stuck. Okay, if the first pa packet is ping-ponging around the internet, you can't start playing the video. You can't, like, start halfway through. You've got to wait for the first bit of data, which is why sometimes, even when you have got a fast connection, you get buffering on YouTube. Okay? Now, the other thing, there is a special piece of data that is sent along with every packet, and it's got a very sinister name. It is called Time to Live. <laughs> which I think is the most awesomely named descriptor for a piece of information in the world. I think it's awesome, that. Time to Live. Anyone guess what that's used for? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Each packet, we have a decision that we make when we start sending data. We'll say, right, okay, the packet can be routed so many times. So it can go through so many decision processes and resend before it needs to be killed. Okay? So what happens, let's say in this case that we set the time to live to before, packet one would have been destroyed when it got to G. Okay, G would have gone, sorry mate, your time's up. Send a message back to the sender, because you got the sender's information in the packet, saying, I had to kill your packet, sorry about that. It was delicious. <laughs> it was chicken. <laughs> chicken crisps or something like that, I don't know. Alright, so we have to do that, because if you get packets that just bounce around the internet, and never get to their destination, you would clog the internet up. Alright, so you have to have... A reasonable guess at how long you can allow a packet to be keep getting redirected and redirected until there is no point. That packet is lost. Sometimes we set this very low on web page stuff. All right, which is why sometimes you might get a page render and you get bits not, not displaying like pictures. The text is usually there but pictures don't get through because they've probably been killed by routers, evil routers that are prowling, looking for like, lone packets of data. <laughs> like, take you. Come, come this way, I'll route you this way. Come down here. <laughs> Sorry about that, mail, son. All right, so, but this is the thing that makes the internet work. It's not really very good for streaming. For streaming, we use a different system called circuit switching. But I'll, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Where you have a dedicated channel. All right, so packet switching, no dedicated channel, but it is great for utilizing a network well. Okay, it allows lots of different messages and different packets of data to be transmitted, making best use of the network. We will talk about the circuit switching yet tomorrow. Okay, right, cheers everyone.